Hi, I'm Lisa Mirable from EAC, and this is our More To Do podcast. Today, I have with me two very special guests. I have Judge Andrew Kreka. He's the District Administrative Judge of Suffolk County, overseeing all court operations for the 10th Judicial District of Suffolk County. I also have Alexa Evans, Center Supervisor at the Cohaloran Cares Children's Center in the Cohaloran Court Complex in Suffolk County. Hi, everyone. How are you today? Hi there. Hi. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Good morning, Lisa. Great to be here. Good morning. So, Judge Kreka, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and um, what you do over at the Cohaloran Care Center? So, I am the district administrative judge for uh, New York State's 10th Judicial District, Suffolk County. Uh, basically, I oversee all of the courts here in Suffolk County. We have... Uh, 13 courthouses uh, located in nine different facilities throughout the county, 1,000 court employees, 80 state judges, 32 town and village courts. So it's a big operation uh, serving Suffolk's 1.5 million people uh, every day in our justice centers uh, throughout the county. And so I saw oversee all those operations and supervise uh, all our courts here in Suffolk County. And uh, part of that which we're here to talk about today is our children's center, which is located in the Cohallen Court Complex, which is our largest uh, court complex here in Suffolk County. And it houses uh, our family court, uh, the district court, the criminal uh, division of the district court, as well as part of our Supreme Court. How many people would you say come in and out of that court daily? Uh, the Cohallen Court Complex is roughly, it varies by day, of course, but it's sure. roughly about a thousand people, sometimes more, sometimes a little less, that cycle in and out of, the, of that this courthouse every day. That is, when I say a thousand, I'm talking about just uh, the, that members of the public, not including our employees and staff that come into this. That's amazing. That is one big job. Thank you so much for everything that you do. And then we have Alexa with us, who runs the uh, Children's Center over at the Cohaloran Court Complex. Yes, so I joined the team right after the shutdown during COVID. So we reopened in September 2021, and we've been running smoothly. We've been making sure that all the children have everything they need and that they're safe and in a nurturing environment and focusing on their health and their well-being is our main purpose at the Children's Center. Give me a little bit of background information. As I understand it, there was a... a New York State Unified Court System developed the, the nation's first statewide uh, system of cheerful, welcoming children's center in the courts. That's correct? Yeah, the original concept really was uh, by state courts was to provide uh, a space for children to be safe when their parents were going through uh, having to appear in court or going through difficult litigations, whether it be criminal family or divorce or whatever it be. Um, you know, lots of parents were in the situations particularly those of limited means, where they didn't have a place to bring their kids. And of course, it could be totally stressful and traumatic for a child uh, to have to appear at a courthouse. So the genesis of, of um, the Children's Center was to provide sort of a safe place for these uh, children to be able to be where that when their parents had to be in court. In Suffolk County, uh, Judge Mary Werner, who is uh, one of my predecessors as district administrative judge back in the late 90s, um, was she helped really form this idea. And Judge Werner herself, she had eight children. She had wow. been uh, a DA um, and was dealing with uh, family crime uh, as a district attorney. Um, uh, so it really, I think it was near and dear to her heart uh, that we set this up and, and that we do it well. And EAC, uh, as I'm sure Alexa knows, has been a partner with the courts uh, since its inception in the late 90s. We partnered with them. Uh, they raise funds. We help with the fundraisers, as well as the Suffolk County Bar Association helps raise funds. Uh, it really is a great concept and really provides uh, a, a safe haven uh, for parents to know that they can bring their children to court, have a safe, uh, nice, happy place to leave them while they deal with some of the stuff they have to deal with here. Yeah, I would imagine it would be extremely stressful to um, miss a court date right? Because you don't have someone to watch your children. And then that must cause a whole slew of problems, right? The courts get backed up. I would say probably, you know, uh, 
the attorney has to appear on behalf of the client to say that they couldn't arrive today. So that causes a whole set of delays. And then, you know, maybe even problems for the person that's in need, you know, because they didn't appear in court in a timely manner. And, and, and that just sort of um, adds to the, to the stress and adds to the turmoil that that person of that person's position. So this is a great service that you're doing, you know, for the children, but also for, for those in need um, who are going through the court and to keep the court going. So I love this concept. Understand too, it's not just folks who are required to come to court in the sense of maybe it's a criminal defendant or a witness in a criminal case, uh, but it goes even beyond that. If you think about yes. victims of domestic violence, people who are cheating in <clears throat> child support or have other issues who are coming to court to file uh, a petition or to get help. Um, right. Uh, all of those folks, uh, those are people who naturally have children, obviously, and um, and this provides a wonderful resource for them. It definitely does, yes. Previ in previous years, we were strictly for the district side of the Cohelen Court Complex, but now we are accepting all of the courtrooms. We're accepting families who have um, business in the library. Maybe they want to research for their case, or they have a meeting in the courthouse, say, with the DA's office. Anything we're accepting. Anyone who needs to bring their child into the courthouse, we will take them and make sure that they're safe and nurtured. What is the age range of the children that visit the um, center? So the age range is six weeks to 12 years of age. Sometimes that may vary, say, if they had a birthday a month ago and now they're 13. We're still, we still accept that child into the center. Um, for children that are over the age limit, we have work packets that we give them. It has activities for their age and coloring pages, crayons, pencils, and a book for their age range that they can take with them um, instead of just having to sit with nothing to do while they wait for their parent. How long has that? That's phenomenal. I've, I think that that's great. And um, how long has this been operational? The Children's Center? The Children's Center, yes. We've been operational since 1996. However, mm -hmm. The center closed uh, March 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and we reopened in September 2021. And actually, Suffolk County was one of the first, I think it was the first children's center to reopen in New York State. That's amazing. That's great. You know, we got to keep these courts uh, moving and functional and get everyone uh, through the system and help help our people of Suffolk County. You guys are doing a great service. Lisa, one of the other things too, I think it's worthy of sharing, and I don't know if Alexis doesn't want to brag, but it's not just a, a child care center. It's not just a place to leave your kids. Um, you know, it's a, it's got lots of good things happening in the center. Uh, they really focus on literacy. Uh, the Children's Center has lots of books um, that are donated throughout the years and, and gotten through fundraisers like bagels for books but each child who visits the uh, children's center leaves with a new book that's tremendous that's that's fabulous it is it's also a resource for uh so many of our families that go there too it's a place where they can uh, be referred to other resources like snap which is a nutrition program or head start um and there's lots of things that the children's center does outside of their primary purpose which is providing child care um, they do every year they do a back to school back uh, backpack drive. They do a food drive at Thanksgiving, adopt a family at Christmas. Um, so there's all different things that are done throughout the year, um, providing kids snacks and things like that, uh, that really the center is it's not just a child care center. It's really part of the culture of our courthouse here. Yeah, really. That is that's amazing. I mean, I had no idea that you offer all these resources. We typically ask families when they come in, there's an area on the intake form requesting if they need any services. So based on the information they give us, we will help them with whatever they need. Say it's food services, say it's housing, say oh. it's WIC or early intervention. We can give the family information on any of that. That's amazing. I mean, I really don't have another word for it other than like I, I'm, I'm stunned because I didn't even know that this existed. I knew we had the Children's Center and I'm an EAC board member, but I had no idea of the resources that you provide it, and how deep it really went. Um, I, I thought it was just really childcare. So this is eye opening for me um, as as just a, a listener and <laughs> just hearing what you, you know, what you do every day. Well, important things, Lisa, is getting the, the word out there, too, because I think yeah. there are lots of people who come to our courthouse and, and come to our court system and they don't know about the children's center so one of the things we've been trying to work with eac on lately is we're going to try to increase signage 
and uh, raise awareness of the existence of the children's center too, so that parents know that this resource is available for them. Well, then this is a very important podcast for everyone. I think uh, this is going to help get the word out. You know, we want to educate uh, Suffolk County that the Children's Center exists. Uh, it's there for you to use as a resource. Um, and they can help you in so many ways. And it's a great place for the kids just to visit, uh, get a gr- get a book, um, have them be a lot less stressed while uh, going through these processes, you know, for everyone. Yeah, and let them be a kid. And just let them play. Just let them let them enjoy themselves. And that's really important. And that's what we want to do. That's safe haven, like you said, um, Judge Krekka. Uh, tell me about uh, the protocols. How do you go ahead? Like, is there an appointment needed? Do we have to call ahead of time? How does it work if I'm coming to the court? Uh, no, families, you, families can just show up. We are open from 1 to 5. So as long as you show up within our working hours, we are more than willing to accept the children into our care. Our limit, we have a um, we have a limit on how many children we can accept. So for the space we're in, we can have 15 people in the room at a time. And okay. we typically have three staff members. So 12 children would be our limit. I'm sure that these children are coming in with all different sorts of circumstances, right? How do you, how do you deal with maybe a, a nervous child or, or someone who is, uh, you know, understressed themselves. Yes, we've definitely, since reopening, we've experienced many parents who are nervous about leaving their children in the center. Typically, they'll show up and they'll tell us outright before we even start the intake process that they're nervous and they just kind of want to take a look at the center. They're not sure if they want to leave their child with us. And we just try as much as possible to make them feel welcomed. If there's no other children in the center, we allow them to come in and take a look. They can view our library and our toys that we have and the activities we have set for the week. Um, Sometimes the parents will be excited after viewing the center and will start the intake process and leave their child in our care. Other times they're still a little nervous and we tend to, we tend to let them know that will be here whenever they're ready. Sometimes that parent will come back, sometimes they won't. If if they don't want their child in our care, like I said before, we send them off with a packet for their child's age level. So the child has something to work on while they're waiting for their parent to be done. You know, one thing we always talk about at EAC is the impact that we have on the community, right? Everyone hears, you know, about the things that we do, but they don't understand what that what we do actually impacts the community. Right. So, Judge Krekka, could you pick up that question? Would Would you be able to uh, discuss what type of impact the center has on the Suffolk County community? Sure. I mean, when you look at um, the impact that the Children's Center has, uh, first of all, it's got a direct impact on caregivers. Right. So mm-hmm. for those folks, uh, it is really providing an awesome resource for them and for their children uh, when they're here. Um, and I talked about some of the, you know, the, the special things that the center does throughout the year. Uh, getting involved in the community with like food drives and the, um, you know, the, the Christmas drive and, and adopting a family and all that, but really specifically the direct impact it has every day here at our Cohelen Court Complex is, is that not only is it providing a place for a caregiver to safely leave their child uh, and not have to worry about that, but think about it, that person who's coming to court, um, now the attorney that they may be representing them, has the ability to have conversations uh, with their client uh, and be have that client completely engaged and listening and receiving this important information, not stressed about their child being there or being affected by it. You know, what happens is, and I've seen this both as a, a litigator when I was uh, dealing, doing a lot of work in family court, if children are there, you know, litigants can't focus on what they're there for and and what they're doing. And it's easily to be distracted and they worry about the kids. And listen, no judge, no attorney for that matter, wants a child uh, sitting there through a court proceeding. It's, it can be traumatic for a child. And and, and some of these kids have already witnessed um, some bad things already. uh, And then now being brought through it can just make them relive that uh, sort of a secondary trauma, if you will. And look, no offense. And judges can be scary sometimes, right, too. They're up sure. on the bench <laughs> yeah. down with the black robe. It's not someplace that we really think is appropriate for children, at least not uh, on a 
on a regular basis. You know, obviously we deal with children, but uh, this th as a having them there just to, uh, because they, there's no child care for a litigant is not really what we want. It's not an ideal situation. Yeah, it's an, I imagine it's not an ideal situation for anyone, and I'm sure that you see a difference in how the court proceedings even go. Absolutely, and like I said too, it's it litigants are more relaxed if they know their children are in a safe place. Um, mm -hmm. the, the lawyers and the judges can do their their work without really worrying about the kids. And trust me, I spent many many years before I went to the bench uh, as a, working in family court in particular, but also in district court. And uh, it's just not a good place for a kid, and it's just not some place that is conducive um, to having somebody bring their children with them. You know, um, Riverhead is a is a fairly new complex. Do you see this um, branching out into the Riverhead area, or would you like to see uh, a center like this in the Riverhead as well? Yeah, so um, it's actually Riverhead's not new. It's it's actually older than Cohalan. Oh, really? But it would be new to having a child care center. It doesn't have one, uh, and you know, in Riverhead we have the Cromarty Court Complex, which houses uh, part of our family court to. Uh, of our family courts sit there as well as uh, support uh, magistrate part and a court attorney referee part. So there's about three or four courts functioning in the family court side of that complex. And then the other side is where we have all our felony level cases being uh, conducted too. So um, I'd love to see a child care center uh, in Riverhead. One of the things we're doing now is we're um, putting together, trying to put together uh, a way to do a needs assessment to see what the demand would be for child care there, um, particularly in that complex. Certainly, it, there are fewer cases at the felony level and fewer litigants passing through that court. So that's okay. one of the reasons we want to see what the demand is. But again, the problem still exists, whether it's one family or 10 families a day that need use of a, a child care, uh, that problem still exists in Riverhead. Yes. And, and uh, one that needs to be solved, right? One that need It would be wonderful if we could do that. Alexa, why don't you tell me a little bit about um, the parents when they, when they leave after picking up their children? Uh, what kind of feedback do you get on a daily basis? Oh, we get... The, the parents and caregivers of these children are so grateful to have a space like this. Typically, they come in and they're like, we were so nervous, we were going to have to bring our child with us into the courtroom. We're so grateful that this is here. Um, typically, most of the children we see come back, which isn't the best situation for the caregivers and the children, but we get a lot of repeat children within the months. And just, we have a few children who want to skip school to come see the children's center. They know it's a place where they can have fun and play and create and learn. And the parents see that and sometimes do let their children skip school so they can come play at the children's center. You know, Lisa, you have to understand too that the folks who are coming to the courthouse for the most part, not all of them, but for the most part are going through uh, their own trauma, their own difficulties, whether yeah. it be family court, a litigation, whether there be a criminal case involved, either as a defendant themselves or a witness. Um, so it's a tough time and a stressful time for people too. So to be able to have a place that can sort of not only relieve them of that stress of placing their child there, but also think about it for the kids, it's a happy place to go. Um, you know, we recently dedicated our children's center to Sue Fox, who is one of uh, just a wonderful court employee who put so much of our heart and soul into making sure the children's center had the resources it need needed and and just was always involved in it. And we did recently dedicated it. and we picked a beautiful color colorful frame. And if you go to the children's center, it's just a happy place. It's colorful. There's great pictures hanging, toys, books. So it is sort of a, a little respite in an otherwise busy courthouse. I, I love that you took this area and made it sort of a sanctuary, you know, for children. And uh, as a mother, you know, I could imagine, you know, having the stress of having to go through um, a court system. I went through my own divorce and it was entirely stressful. And, um, you know, having to be able to check that off the list, like, oh, one thing I don't have to worry about, right? One thing that's off my plate and I know they're in a good place. That brings peace of mind, you know, to, to the caregiver, to, the, like you said, the attorneys and everyone that's, that's involved. 
So uh, again, thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, I hear that there's a great event coming up. There is a great event coming up. We have our annual Kohalan Cares for Kids event coming March 16th at the Suffolk Bar Association. It is from 6 to 8 p.m. And, and what are we doing at this event? What are we doing at this event? Well, we have raffles at this event. So tickets can be bought to um, put your name in for the raffles. There's a ton of raffles. I think last year we had about 20 baskets. Nice. We also have a wine wall. So you can also buy tickets for the wine wall and it's, it's kind of like a blind bag wine wall. So we have them in paper bags and the wine can range from $10 to hundred dollars. And it's a surprise when you open the bag, depending on which one you pick. And all the proceeds go to the Kohaleran Cares Children's Center, correct? All the proceeds go to the Children's Center. Yes. I love that. I it's, love a family, it's a family friendly event uh, too. So it's not, it's someplace where people can bring their kids and things like that too. So, but it's a great oh, fundraiser. Where is this being held at? The Suffolk County Bar Association? Suffolk County Bar Association, yes. And where do we go to find out information about this? You can go to the EAC website. Okay, so we can go to eac-network.org for more information about this great event um, on March 16th. And that's happening from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And we're raising money for the Children's Center so that we can do more here on Long Island. So help us spread the word. Uh, come on down to this great fun event for families, for for individuals, and help us support this great cause. Let's keep our courts moving, keep our families happy, and our children safe. Well, I want to thank both of you for coming on today's uh, podcast, uh, the uh, More To Do podcast for EAC Network. Thank you, Alexa, and thank you, Judge Kreka. And I'm sure that uh, you'll be hearing more about this great center. This is not our last podcast, so we'll be helping spread the word. Thank you, everyone.